Hi, this is Justin Coletti. You may know me from Sonic Scoop, but today I'm on the Plug and Lines channel. We get to talk to Govinda Doyle. He is a multi-time ARIA-winning producer, engineer based on the Gold Coast in Australia, and he's also designer of some really boutique high-end analog audio hardware under the name Harris Doyle. Himself and his partner, Rod Doyle, have been making some really cool sounding analog gear. And the first one to be modeled ever, the Nautilus EQ, is now part of the Plugin Alliance family. You can try out this plugin for yourself for free for two weeks over at plugin alliance.com. Or if you're part of the Mega Subscription Bundle, it is now just part of your Mega Subscription at no additional charge. It is a passive EQ that has some dynamics control in there as well, almost like a tape machine kind of saturation and transient softening, in addition to being a really clean musical sounding EQ. I'm excited to hear more about this design from Govinda. Govinda, how are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you doing? Not too bad, man. Thanks for being here. So first big question for you is, why did you design this EQ? I designed this EQ originally out of selfishness. Uh, I wanted to build a console. I wanted to have something different, not for the sake of having something different, but something that I could have in my digital workflow that was a little simpler to use, quick, and sounded great, super high quality, above mastering grade. And I wanted something um, that also, ironically, when we talk about mastering grade, we think about something clean. But in this case, I was really thinking about something that could be also dirty uh, in the sense of its distortion characteristics. So there was a few things that I had to consider about the whole project, but initially it was just pure selfishness, to be honest. Yeah. Well, it makes a lot of sense because we all know digital does clean very well, but sometimes it doesn't do color and character very well. And I think one of the things that potentially adds some really interesting color and character here is the peak level function that's built in here. Can you give us a sense of what that peak level control does and how you might use it? Yeah, look, basically, um, without being too technical, in basic terms, we're looking at 14 dBs from the RMS to the peak. That's the maximum headroom. And then we can wind it down to less towards the RMS. And the reason that is, is because we want to control dynamic range in a kind of analog domain in this, in this case here. You know, digital has a very high dynamic range and it's fantastic. It's accurate and it's, it's beautiful. But compared to some things, these classic records we hear on tape and look, they have 1% distortion, like kind of minimum on a tape machine. So we wanted to have some things that we could bring it towards a tape flavor and we even used um, transformers. So it's actually technically it's magnetic uh, limiting. And what we want to do is we want to bring the sound together, but not have the RMS volume change, uh, which is a little bit unique. And the reason we didn't want the RMS to change at all was because in situation of a, of a mix, um, if you felt like something was a little bit too sort of like, um, you know, a snare transient was, was too high here and there or whatever it was, and you wanted to even it out, you could just click the peak level in a few notches until you felt like it was sitting more even and not actually change the mix at all. So it was sort of like a, a quick way of doing what could be a potentially long job if you had to match the levels and, you know, put a limiter on and this and that. Uh, compressor. Actually, yeah. So it sounds like what that peak level control is doing is it is driving the transformer in there a little bit harder. So you're bringing down the level of your peaks relative to the average, but it's doing it in a way where you're not compensating by bringing up the whole level like a modern digital limiter might do. So you're just kind of softening peaks without messing around with things too much. It sounds pretty useful. What kinds of instruments do you find that peak level control to be the most useful on? I mean, obviously transient material, like, you know, acoustic guitars, snares, kick drums, toms, hi-hats, cymbals, um, anything is sort of a bit, you know, has a little spike, you know, when you look at, everyone looks at waveforms and when you're looking at the waveforms, you sort of think, well, look at that little spiky waveform, you know, and it's, it's basically just trying to bring that back into some sort of fashion, um, that it's a little more even to the ear, you know, um, there's a lot of science between this. It's like, if you are a musician and you play like in a band practice room, you'd all know that like after like a half an hour, an hour, your ears are compressing, right? And maybe the snare drum sounds like great. The drum, the drum, he sounds like he's really even, you know, but on the digital, when you're recording it, uh, it doesn't really sound like it is. It's too, it's too accurate in a way. I think that's what we, there's so, we have many saturated plugins, the distortion plugins are there available and there's some amazing ones now. And I think we're all trying to, you know, get a little bit of that old school thing. But I think what we're really wanting is that, um, evenness. 
you know, of the old school records, which is coming from tape, and which has a very low dynamic range compared to digital, which is a massive dynamic range. So I feel like I'm trying to marry those two worlds together, you know, the best of both. It makes a lot of sense that there is that softening aspect of this thing. There's a little bit of dynamic control built into this unit potentially, but of course it's not just a saturation box. It's not just a dynamic control box. It's first and foremost an EQ, a passive EQ. So can you give me a sense, first of all, why you designed it to be a passive EQ? What's the benefits of a passive EQ? And what do you think are its primary strengths as an equalizer? Well, I guess the first thing, why a passive EQ? Well, it's, um, it's the most natural sounding EQ in general. Um, we particularly, we try, actually, we did try a few different types of, um, prototypes and we, we ended up going with one makeup gain stage, which is kind of archaic in a way, because I don't know if anyone knows what that means, but like in general, there can be multiple gain stages to control the EQ that gives more control and more preciseness, but we wanted something that was precise in its bands, but a little bit more liquid in the way that it actually functioned in the, in a musical kind of way. So we really were wanting something that, um, when you turn it on, you're like, oh, this sounds great. And you turn it off as like, well, oh, I want that back on rather than an EQ sound like it's something added to the sound. We're thinking, well, hey, this actually sounds like it's part of the sound, you know, and, and you can't live without it. So that was really the concept of that passive EQ. Uh, some of the functions, that are maybe a little bit different. Um, one is that the whole thing is is a little bit unusual once you start producing and cutting things close to each other. It does some pretty unusual stuff. It's really nothing like anything that's ever really come out. The only thing that is like that some of those EQs is it's an LCR network, which is basically a capacitor, resistor, and um, inductor coil per band and per uh, frequency. We do want the phase to be, uh, I guess, you know, shifted when things aren't phase shifted they sound a little bit stronger they sound a little bit more musical so again coming back to that musical kind of thing another thing is it's very hard to make a mistake on this eq it's sort of like if it sounds good it's good you can't really make a boo-boo you know it's 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 built for it the user uh, we tried to simplify as much as we could to make it really enjoyable and quick to use another thing is the bands are in clusters so you have a gain which can be switched to positive or negative or off, and then you have a, a frequency selection. They're all part of one cluster, so there's four bands uh, in total. And you can switch out the bands if you don't want to use them or switch them in, which is kind of useful. On the analog and the plug-in, they're both the same. It makes it very quick to sort of find what a problem is or something that you do or don't like and to disengage it to hear what it's doing or to push, push to a positive boost or a negative. And you can figure out very quickly in seconds, like the feedback is very quick. Do I like it? Do I not? And move through the creative process. Gotcha. Now, this is the first time that most people are going to be able to try out this tool now that's in the plugin domain. But before it was made into a plugin, you did place a whole bunch of these units with some producers and engineers out there. Can you give us a sense for who's already been using this in its hardware form and what they had to say about it? <laughs> Where do I start? There's so many different people who have heard it, um, but there's only a few people who are using it. We've only really made a very small handful of units and anyone who has really heard them, they kind of don't give it back. So it's a bit of a problem for me. <laughs> Joking. Anyway, so, um, yeah, one of the people that I think that was really the first person to really take notice was Ryan Hewitt, who's, um, he's an incredible producer and engineer, very talented man. And he, um, he heard that at Nashville Gnome and he basically had a listen and when he heard it in action, he just didn't want it. He didn't want me to take it back to Australia. He said, just, I can I have it, you know, can I, can I keep using it? I was, I was like, cool, because he loves us so much. And re, it, in, in a way, like I was really, I mean, in, in reality, I was just going to Nam to share this, this thing, you know, with my fellow producers and friends and musicians. And I had no real, um, I didn't know how I was going to go. I knew I loved it. And I knew some people uh, around me loved it. And they kind of asked me to make a an Apple version. I mean, I wouldn't have actually made an Apple version. I, I would have just selfishly made my own console, but a lot of producers and engineers that were local say, Hey, this thing sounds so cool. Why can't you just make an Apple version, which is, you know, a little more affordable and a little more accessible and a little more useful for people in D DAWs. So I, that was how that kind of started. But I don't, I don't think I would have even got there if people didn't really ask for it. So it was a funny sort of thing. So it's, it's kind of awesome. That it's, it's in a plugin format. 
which is a far more accessible format for most people. It's a fairly expensive, um, boutique piece of gear. And at least you can have the plug in and it sounds so great. Like you can get a really good feel for, um, what, what it sounds like an analog, but also more importantly, you can make your music sound really cool, really quickly and make, and make it, make it more fun and make it more enjoyable. So that's the whole concept really of Harold Stall was this whole kind of making things sound great, make it more musical and make it easy to use and hard to make mistakes because you kind of just hear it. You like it or you don't, you know, it's, it's really that simple. Awesome. Well, for those of you who want to try this out for yourself, go over to plugin-alliance.com where you can try out the new Nautilus EQ or anything else in the Plugin Alliance family for free for two weeks. Or if you are a member of the mega subscription bundle, this is now yet just another tool that's part of your mega subscription at no additional charge. Govinda, thanks so much for taking the time to tell us about this EQ today. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, thank you for being here. And thank you guys for hanging out with us. This has been Justin Coletti of Sonic Scoop on the Plugin Alliance channel. See you next time.